that doesn't sound at all actual sincere there. Yeah, you know, and the stream's like, what is he talking about? Well, the good news stream is that you don't need to know. <laughs> so welcome to the eighth session of the Akagi Group. I know it's been a while since we've last met. Uh, that is just summer scheduling. Part of it mine, part of it others, but mostly mine. Uh, but uh, hopefully we will be uh, meeting somewhat regularly uh, starting in August because some of us are going to Gen Con and that messes with the schedule a little bit. Basically... If you were really paying attention to Akagi, the best place to catch it is probably on YouTube until August. And then, hopefully again in August, we'll have a more regular stream schedule. Uh, but without any sort of announcements of that in mind, um, we're just going to go ahead and dive right in. Now, uh, Josh, I think you have uh, sort of a small recap for us. And if you want me to do the recap, I can. If you would prefer to do your recap, go right ahead. I'd like to give it a shot. I've practiced it. I'm trying to channel some TOS. Okay. So, excuse me. I'm going to ham it up some. Last time on Star Trek Akagi. Zarya's counseling session shattered Miller's mind. Riley blamed Mendoza some more. Miller tried to be Judge Judy. Zines tried to be Judge Dredd. We met a Klingon who's obviously a bad guy. Learned about some weird romance suicide thing between another Klingon and Kirstie Alley. We also encountered an incompetent engineer that Miller wanted to murder. Some chick who very clearly had a gun. And a dead body that wasn't the right body at all. Now, exciting conclusion. <laughs> yeah, you could have some momentum for that. Um, so, if you're not caught up with Akagi, more or less what he says is correct. Um, last session, there was a trial of sorts where it came out that uh, the head JAG officer of the station was asked to perform a ritualistic suicide enabling sort of Klingon ritual. I said ritual twice there, but whatever. Um, point being that part of this suicide ritual, uh, I guess you could say backfired because uh, the actual JAG officer that facilitated this was found not only with the body and the murder weapon, but flat out admitted to it. And also during this trial, it was revealed that most of Starbase 23 is incompetent, uh, much to the uh, worry of the station commander. Uh, but what's relevant for these guys is that it came out that the actual sort of, I guess you could say, person of interest uh, for this trial uh, escaped on a Denobulan freighter. And uh, these guys have returned to the Akagi and are more or less tracking down the Denobulan freighter known as the Majestic Sea Cow. Now, it's called the Majestic Sea Cow in Earth Common. What it actually translates to a Denobulan, I'll let you figure that out on your own. But we're going to start today with uh, most of you on the bridge. And, uh, you know, you have already left Starbase 23. Uh, you are following the Ion Trail of the uh, Majestic Sea Cow, and you're making good progress so far. Uh, you're estimating that at your current rate, you will be able to find them hopefully within the next five, six hours. So there is time to do things before you actually find them, per se. So as usual, here is your open RP time to do as you wish. Number one, are we within comm range of that vessel yet? Uh, I don't believe so yet, Captain. Very well. Uh, Continue at best possible speed. However hard you need to push the engines, I want that ship. Uh, yes, Captain. Uh, moving it up. To as fast as I can possibly get out of the engines. Uh, Commander Riley, can I get a little bit more, say, three, four more percent out of the engines? Uh, yeah, you got it. Um, I just don't know if we can push it for too long. Just be careful. We haven't had to go max or warp too much, and I'm a little nervous about that. But I can get you at warp 9.4 easily for 12 hours. Anything above that, we're pushing the limits. Understood. Uh, Ensign Cerule, can you 
keep trying to hail that ship and let me know is the second we're in comms range. Uh, yes, sir, but I believe Ensign Fredrickson is more equipped for that than I am, sir. Well, I mean, I'm used to having you on my left. Uh, Ensign Fredrickson, did, did what I said. I heard you, sir. Already on it. And, uh, you know, he's he kind of got that earpiece that Ahura always has in her ear, and he just keeps trying over and over and isn't getting anything. Um, but uh, it's right about then that, uh, you know, normally Barkley the cat, by this point, he's become a bridge staple. He just sort of does cat things. Um, but it's at this point that Barkley actually just kind of turns in the chair and just starts meowing at Captain Miller. And it's not a normal meow. It's kind of a, kind of a, not like a, a cute meow or a, or a I'm in distress meow. It's, it's a weird meow, if that makes any sense. Okay, I get up and walk over to the cat, very clearly stressed and thinking about the next encounter, but still walk over and pick out Barkley. Okay. The the moment your hand gets in range, it like rubs up against you and begins purring very loudly, which Cerule is not a fan of, but Barkley does it all the same. I pet Barkley. It's going to be okay, buddy. Good kitty. Good kitty. And that's when the Tolarian hook spiders attack. No. Um, but uh, as you're over there, uh, Fredrickson actually says, oh, sir, I, I think I've got something. Uh, audio only, it seems. Put it through. Uh, yes, sir. And uh, what comes over the loudspeakers is not like an open channel, but it sounds more like a distress call. And what uh, what you hear is this is... Uh, Captain Garrett of the Majestic Sea Cow, we've experienced engine fail failure and we are drifting towards a neutron star. Uh, we could use any assistance from any vessel within the area. Mr. Fredrickson, can we respond yet? Uh, I believe so, sir. Uh, strangest thing, though. I, I don't know if you've had any experience dealing with neutron stars, but... Uh, According to the timestamp on the message, this isn't supposed to be sent for another 20 minutes. Like, it's it's a pre-recorded message, sir. I'm, I'm, I think that much is clear, but again, the timestamp is off. Does the timestamp account for any sort of time dilation offset that could be happening from the star's gravity? I thought that, sir, and I ran it through the ship's computers... No, uh, if I had to hazard a guess, sir, it's almost like someone played a message too early. Interesting. Is there any way you could tell? Was this a pre-recorded message or was it a message sent live? Uh, they are actively transmitting it, sir. So I don't know what that particular means. Uh, based on the transmission location... They are not near a neutron star at all, unless there's one we don't know about. And Cerule says, I can confirm that, sir. I'm not detecting uh, any neutron stars within 12 light years. What do you think, number one? Uh, if I had to hazard a guess, I'd say that uh, we probably need to help that ship, but not for the reason that that distress, distress call is uh, claiming. And Riley, that's a good question. So it is sort of going in the direction of the neutral zone, um, the Klingon Federation neutral zone, which kind of still exists. Because if you remember, we're after the whole Kittimler Accords have been signed. So there's an uneasy piece right now. Um, so they're they're still headed in that general direction. Is the message coming from our side or the Klingon side? Uh, still on the Federation side. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, well, there's not much we can do until we get in range. Let's go to Red Alert, please. Okay. Aye, Captain. And of course, with the uh, command given to the ship's computer, all the lights on the bridge and throughout the ship begin flashing red, uh, indicating that everyone on the ship should be uh, at combat readiness. And uh, just for thematic sake, we'll say that a dramatic sque screen wipe later, uh, you all do arrive in the uh, vicinity of the Majestic Sea Cow. And uh, even without prompting, Cerule puts it on the viewer and... Looks like your standard Denobulan freighter. Uh, it's kind of like a Daedalus class, if you're familiar with that. So a, a long cylinder with two pylons that have nacelles on them, and then a sphere at the front. Uh, it looks very similar to that, probably because in this era, a lot of the old Daedalus classes have been repurposed as freighters of some sort. Um, but that's what you're seeing on the screen. And again, you're not seeing a neutron star anywhere in the area. Mr. Cerule, please scan that ship. On it. And if one of you guys could roll a roll for Cerule, um, you guys have three momentum at the moment. Uh, someone will need to keep track of that. And I would say for Cerule, uh, it depends what do you want Cerule to be scanning for. I'd say at this point, we want to scan for life science because I think we still suspect that this ship has the ambassador. So that's really what my primary focus right now is. Helping them, we'll get to that, but I really want to find this ambassador first. Okay. In that case, she's going to be doing a science, uh, a reason science, uh, and the ship, the Akagi, will assist with a sensor science. The difficulty before advanced sensor suite is two. So I believe you have advanced sensors, so the difficulty goes down to a one. Uh, I got the ship up. Um, you said uh, sensors science. security? Sensor science. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, do, and also looking at the sheet, do we still have a hull breach on, or a breach in engines? Uh, no, you should be free of all breaches at okay. this point. Reason science for Cerule, would you say sensor operation is uh, applicable here? Most definitely it would be. Ooh, I see green. So that is uh, four successes total, which means you guys are capped at six momentum already. Very nice. So Sarul uh, runs her sensor scan, and she kind of almost does that head thing where it's almost like being taken aback or like a double take, and she turns slightly and says, uh, sir, I'm not detecting any life over there. Could we spend a momentum for more information? You certainly could. And the question is, what more information would you like? Thinking about asking if there's any kind of spatial disturbance in the area. What do you guys think? Or maybe if the ship is running on automated systems. You know, actually, that's more logical. Yeah, let's go that way. All righty. So, uh, you spend the momentum, you drop down to five, and yeah, sure enough, uh, Sproul says, well, sir, I guess that does explain why there's no life signs. Uh, yes, this ship is running on automation. Are there any other ships in the area? Uh, doing, are you going to spend momentum for that, or are you just asking in general? Yeah, let's spin a momentum, because I'm hoping that momentum spin would tell us if it was a sneaky ship versus just a normal question. Okay. All right, so uh, going down to four momentum overall, uh, what you learn is that Srule says, ah, well, sir, I, uh, I think I have the answer for what might be going on here. Uh, you know in our past encounters with the Klingons how they've liked to sort of sneak up on us on Cloak? 
Yes. Well, there's three Cavort class, at least, I think, that are shadowing that freighter under cloak. Interesting. Mr. Fredrickson, if you could open a wide channel to this entire system, please. Uh, channel open, sir. To all vessels in the area, including the cloaked vessels, cloaked Klingon vessels near this ves near the Akagi, this is USS Akagi, Captain Miller speaking. Please identify yourself and state your intentions. We are here on a rescue mission. I think I'll leave it at that. Okay. So Fredrickson has a hand to his ear, listening very intently, and says, uh, No reply, sir. And Cerule says, I can confirm that they have not even started moving on thruster bases, sir. Though it is very hard to uh, track under cloak. Really, the only reason I'm able to see it is because I noticed a discrepancy in the power out. It, it's not important, sir. Uh, well, maybe it is. But long story short, there's a problem with the Cavort class, I think. Uh, we can talk more about it later. I'm sorry, Anton, you said there's a problem with the Cavort class, as in they need assistance? No, uh, sorry, sir. I'm trying to be very brief, uh, given the tense nature of the situation. Um, if you do not mind, basically, last time we encountered a Cavort class, I did a thorough scan of their vessel, and I noticed that their cloak pulls a little bit more power than it should, and that provides a sort of weakness in their cloak if you know to look for it. That's right, Ensign. Very good. Sorry, sir. I, I will be more, ver more ver ver verbose. There we go. That's a word. Verbose in the future. No, that's not necessary, Ensign. Your head's in the right place. I Mine probably isn't, if I'm being honest. Actually, let's, uh... hmm. let's put a tractor beam on that ship. Talk about the, 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 the Nebulon ship. Okay, so you are currently, if I had to put it at ranges, you are currently at uh, extreme range. In fact, why don't we just, uh, let me see, did I have the map prepared? Uh, give me one moment to prepare the map, and we can actually just look at them out. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. All right, well, uh, we're just going to use uh, the old Gorn ship because apparently my Daedalus class is nowhere to be found. All right, so token layer, put you guys on this map. So right about now, so they're headed away from you. I'll adjust it for the stream in a moment. So they are not the Gorn Varanus. They are the Majestic Sea Cow. There you go. And adjust it for the stream. So that's about, you're about, uh, what is that, medium range away from it at the moment. Yeah, I think what I'd like us to do is get into close range, which we have to be for tractor beam, and then throw our tractor beam and stop that motion. Okay. So how are you getting close to it? Are you just going to go straight up to it? Are you going to maybe take a, a wide sweep around? Like, how are you approaching this? Well, I think it matters where the the Cavort class ships are. Can we tell that on the map? Uh, yes, you are roughly seeing them uh, somewhere in this area. So somewhere in those four hexes. Uh, there's one over here. And then there's one supposedly in front of it. Oh, so they're kind of surrounding us. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Uh, what do you guys think? I think we just go straight for it since we are already surrounded. We just get the closest path to this ship and try to capture it. Let's tell Starfleet what's up first. That's a very good call. Yeah, that'll work. Maybe we bounce a message back to the Starbase? Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Sur or Mr. Fredrickson, let's make sure it's a, an encrypted communication, please. And if you can relay back to the Starbase our situation, the disposition of the majestic sea cow, the Klingon vessels, and our intentions to capture the sea cow. Uh, yes, sir. Transmitting that all now. 
I can confirm that it has been received, sir. However, getting a message back might take some time. Sure. I think. Oh, hey, you know what? I just it just occurred to me. We have we have lots of support vessels. Why? What if we launch some shuttles and had them just park themselves next to the Klingon vessels just to let them know that we know they're there? Okay. How many do you want to launch your executive classes? Do you want to launch normal uh, craft or how do you how do you want to send them out kind of a thing? Uh, maybe three, because three of the executive class, and have those three ships just hang out near the Klingon vessels, and then Akagi will move in and tractor the the sea cow. Okay, I'm gonna give you access to A, B, and C, and go ahead and put their tokens where you would like. Oh, this isn't gonna go badly or anything. <laughs> I wonder if a Kavorik can kill a shuttle in one shot. Well, skill two, they're harder to hit, at least. That's a thing. I yeah. think with four shields, they're, yeah, they're very easy to kill. Hmm. It's Actually, not my intention to, like, to be aggressive either. I just want to let them know that we know they're there. Right. And I think I've been saying it wrong, actually. It's the Katinga, not the Kavort. Very easy to mix up. So the Katinga are the long neck, uh... Yeah. Destroyers. I'm not sure that's. I'm not sure that's better or worse for us. Well, yeah, this is the Reef Fifty Sevens. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. But, uh, oh, go ahead. But then my uh, my comment about the Kobayashi Maru makes more sense. It really does. Well, uh, what happens is when you send out the shuttles, uh, C and B, so the top and the bottom shuttles, they fly out to where uh, Cerule is more or less able to guess where Klingons might be hiding. Uh, however, when the uh, Executive Class Shuttle A, which I think we have names for, I'll have to fix later, um, when Executive Shuttle A flies right about here, so right off the starboard bow of the Majestic Sea Cow, um, a torpedo fires at it. Now, this torpedo comes from a cloaked vessel. So I'm going to say that this is a surprise attack, which is going to lower the difficulty by one, but I'm still going to roll to see if the torpedo hits. So they only need to see two successes here. Uh, the good news for Executive Shuttle A is that uh, the torpedo completely whiffs uh, with Spy, and actually, no, that would have been difficulty three. Either way, they only scored one success. Torpedo misses Executive Shuttle A completely. And it is at this point uh, that their surprise attack is up that at least the one vessel, uh, the one that you were guesstimating almost on the money where it was, uh, decloaks and actually begins hailing you. <laughs> this ought to be interesting. Mr. Fredrickson, please put it on screen. So on screen, you see a uh, typical Klingon warrior uh, of the time, which means uh, he actually has no ridges, so he's been a victim of the uh, whole virus nonsense. But uh, he sort of strokes his goatee and says, I am Captain Oroshi. State your business here. Pleasure to meet you, Captain. My name is Captain Jeffrey Miller on the Starship Akagi. My intention here is I'm answering a distress call in Federation territory. The Majestic Sea Cow is registered as a Denobulan vessel, left our starbase not too long ago. And we've come to see if they need assistance. Broadcasting a distress call. Uh, are you here to provide assistance? And furthermore, what is your intention? I, you just unsuccessfully fired a photon torpedo at one of my ships. You must Is this an act of war? The Pata who mans my weapons was overzealous. He thought that he saw a Romulan scout vessel rather than one of your shuttles. We too are here to render assistance, but as you can see on sensors, there are no life forms on the vessel. Therefore, we were simply going to escort the shuttle or the craft back to one of your star bases. 
And you may roll an insight and command on that. The difficulty isn't too high. It's a difficulty too. Total bullcrap. Everybody or just uh, Miller? I mean, if you want to just think it's bullcrap, you can. Mm. But if you want to confirm it's bullcrap, I need a roll. Would you say empathy, leadership, tactics, or diplomacy? Yeah, I would think more than one would apply. It's also my gambit to get you guys momentum is what this is. All right. And sure enough, you get one momentum bringing you up to five. Uh, Zines, same thing. So Zines and Miller, uh, yeah, he's full of it. Like, he's so full of it that uh, probably a recruit out of the academy would be able to catch his bluff. It's that bad. Hey, uh, uh, Captain Miller, I uh, believe the term is getaway driver? Yeah. I I think I'm... Well, is the channel still open <laughs> before I talk bad about this guy? Uh, Fredrickson has enough mind to mute it temporarily. I honestly have to say I expected more from a Klingon warrior than, than what we've seen so far. All right. Fredrickson, if you could unmute the channel, please. Unmuted, sir. Captain Hiroshi, let's cut the act. What are your intentions? Again, you have crossed into Federation territory. You have fired on a Federation vessel. And you can see that uh, his entire countenance changes. Like before, it was just a oops, my bad sort of expression. Now it's one of almost like deadly seriousness. And uh, Roshi says, very well, this spy craft does not suit me anyways. We are here to clean up a mess, a mess that has been years in the making, and we will not stand to see you getting word of it back to your superiors. And he barks something in Klingon, and uh, sure enough, two more Katingas decloak, firing photons in the process. Um, now what's going to happen here is the photons are both designated towards the Akagi, however, depending on if they even hit, I will give you guys the opportunity to shoot them down, shoot the torpedoes down with your shuttlecraft. Um, because you did obviously fly them out in that direction. So let's roll for uh, the, this should be C. Uh, let's roll for Katinga B and C and see what happens. So Katinga B um, will hit you. So we'll deal with that in a moment. And Katinga C will also hit you. So you have the option, again, to shoot down or attempt to shoot down the torpedoes with your shuttles. Now, this is going to be just a standard, uh, just roll me 2d20, um, because, you know, you've got your standard personnel on the shuttles. Um, and then the shuttle will assist with a uh, weapons and the security. And the difficulty on this is a 3. But if you succeed, you shoot down the torpedoes. I could take care of the shuttles. Okay. Now, what I will say is if you've put a specific NPC that we already know of on the shuttles, then you can roll for them. Otherwise, there's just going to be a generic, we'll say, 10 or, 10 or less kind of a thing. I'm going to look at our NPCs to see who I would have put on there. Maybe would have put Bran on one of them. Okay. So yeah, let's get a roll from uh, Vran, and then uh, then we'll do one generic unless someone else wants to throw an NPC on the other one. Are we only rolling one dice or two? Uh, you're rolling for both torpedoes, so let's handle the Katinga B torpedo first. So that's already one success from uh, Shuttle C. So I need to see a, a weapon or a control and a security uh, from... What's his name? Uh, from Vran. No, I was I, asking, do each of the shuttles roll two dice to shoot it down, or only one? Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. So the shuttles themselves each roll one dice, okay. but the NPC that is piloting the shuttle is going to roll their own dice, if that if that's following. Gotcha. 
So, for the Varan, would you say that uh, guerrilla tactics or starship security might be a focus? I'll give you guerrilla tactics on the thinking that this is a surprise attack, and that's kind of what guerrilla warfare is. Well, I can I could roll Varan. I've got his his shig up. I think for the second shuttle, we should probably spend some momentum to get them extra dice if we can. Mm-hmm. All right, how much do momentum do you want spent? All right, so unfortunately, the first torpedo from Katinga B is going to hit. Um, let's see how the other shuttle fares. Um, remember, you need three successes at the moment, and unless you put a named NPC on that vessel, your target number is just going to be a 10. I can't... I don't know if we have anyone that's really much better. None of our NPCs, no. Also, Walter, uh, you just need to delete the token once you put it down from Momentum. Just literally hit the delete uh, button. That's how you get rid of it. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I spent one Momentum, so whatever generic red shirt we have on the other shuttle can roll an extra dice. All right, so I need to see someone roll me 3d20, please. Again, your target number is a 10. I got it. Not a great chance, but maybe. Nah. Uh, All right. So unfortunately, uh, try as they might, the executive shuttles do try to respond and shoot the torpedoes down. Uh, however, torpedoes were fired too quickly, too too, too accurately to uh, to shoot down. So they do impact. But I think the good dan the good the ah the good news is that the first one does all of two damage, so does nothing to you. Uh, the second uh, does five, which, again, I think, what, your resistance is six? Five. Five? Uh, yeah, we're five. Yeah, then five. Then it just hits your shields, and uh, your shields are holding. Captain, permission to respond in kind with torpedoes? I think that is appropriate, number one. If if I could, I would like to go first, because I'm going to try a rally to get us... Actually, I'm going to try to create an advantage for us. All right, what is your advantage? I'm going to... So I've probably fought... Miller's probably engaged D7s or Katinga's before, so what I'm going to suggest to, to Zines is a method to maneuver us that's going to make us more difficult to hit, and also playing off their numbers in a disadvantage for them. So, like, keeping us between them. So, to target us, they're either going to have to shoot themselves or, like, really pay attention. So, like, using them as cover with each other. Gotcha. Um, I would say that this will be a... What could it be? How about a insight and command? Because you're trying to read the battlefield and you're trying to... Uh, communicate a tactic to someone. Okay. Um, and let's make the difficulty di on this a three because it is a very complex thing which you are trying to communicate. Sounds good. Uh, would tactics apply? Okay. A tactic would definitely apply here. Cool. I'd like to spend a momentum for a third dice. I think I can get that back for us. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, so unfortunately, it's a good idea, Captain Miller, but uh, either it's just not coming across or the battlefield conditions aren't quite right. Either way, the net result is is that, uh, I guess, since Zines is at the helm, Zines, you're like, I can't do that, sir. Okay, if I could. All right. I'd like to spend two momentum for a swift task. Okay. And I'm going to do a direct. I'm going to say, okay, Zines, if we can't do that, pick one, the one you like the least, and let's just blow them out of the water. All right, so it'll bring you down to one momentum. And my direct, uh, Zines, you do your thing, and I will assist, but because I'm assisting, um, you get a D20, a D20 reroll. Okay. Um, all right, so let's see. 
Yeah, screw it. I just want to kill one. Um, so we'll go with uh, C. Mm -hmm. um, and I would like to uh, set fire torpedoes in a salvo. Okay, so as a reminder, uh, torpedoes by themselves automatically give me one threat for firing. If you fire a salvo, that becomes three threat total. Okay. At least I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Again, it's it's been a while. I'm a little rusty. Um, but torpedoes are... Oh, they're long range. Sure. Yeah, that's the thing, the... though, is torpedoes are long range, so you are not in the optimal range for the torpedoes. The difficulty okay. would increase by one. Then I'm going to shoot A, because he seems to be the commander. It is Good long move. range. Um, she says for direct that I had just assist with command. That doesn't actually say the attribute to assist with. I, I think I've usually done it presence command. So we'll just roll with that. Now, what I will say um, is uh, C and B are both at uh, medium range if you wanted to phaser them. Hmm. Well, apparently it's just you not Miller's day. I am. I am no help. Uh, <laughs> I can roll the uh, Akagi. You know what? Uh, actually, yeah. I'll I'll do phasers instead, and I'll change my mind from a a, a salvo. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to use the attack pattern task. Okay. Um, now the the attack pattern task does not actually fire. It's just a movement, correct? It is just a movement. Yes. Shit. It's been too long. I forgot why I have these talents and why they're all stacking on top of each other, but don't actually do anything. Um, well, let's take a look. Again, we're, we're rusty, I think, understandably, so let's, let's um, take a look. Because I was going to try to do strafing run. All right, let's so see what we got. I can take the attack pattern task um, and then keep the initiative, but it cost me zero to keep the initiative. Mm -hmm. um, so what I was wanting to do was... Um, move like down towards here, mm -hmm. and then use phasers at um, oh, they're medium. God damn it! I'm just sucking on this. Um, it's fine. Forward. We can even back Chat, up a bit. Yeah, I was um, gonna say, so it's a good idea. I think I see what you're you're wanting to do here. So theoretically, you would want to move down towards Katinga C, so like somewhere hereish. Mm -hmm. Um. The downside to that is, again, there's an optimum range involved with all of the uh, phasers and your all your weapons. And to get that close would be close range. Now, if you were, like, say here, uh, you know, like if you had moved just a little bit, uh, you would be uh, still at medium range. Now, looking at your talents, though, um, my guess is what you're designed to do is uh, you're meant to be told... Uh, well, not even with a direct task. Like, on your turn, um, what it seems that you do is you do a strafing run, which means that you do the attack pattern, and, you know, you spend no... Because normally, to keep the initiative, it's two momentum. So right. you wouldn't have to spend the momentum to do that. And then what you do after that is you would normally spend uh, two more momentum to do a swift task... And normally when you do a swift task, the difficulty of the second task goes up, but uh, it does not for you because you have because fly, fly by. by. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then, all right, that it actually sounds like what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, all right, so then I will use, I'll do the attack pattern and I'm going to move. Well, um, attack pattern also doesn't move. It it does set you up with benefits, but it doesn't actually move you. I did oh. check that. So, okay. Walter, sorry to interrupt, but I, a quick question, ELH. Mm -hmm. I can't remember, but the immediate momentum that we get from firing phasers, mm -hmm. can we use that to do a swift task? Uh, you mean from versatile? Yes, from versatile. Yep. Yeah, the versatile momentum has to be spent on the attack. It cannot be used for anything else. We're we're also not on Zion's turn, right? We're this is the direct. Yeah, this is still the direct is... action. Okay, so then I will wait for my turn to do all my shenanigans, and on the direct action, I'm just going to shoot C with phasers. All right, because we are we are currently in medium range. I completely forgot that we are actually on Miller's turn. 
Hey, that's completely all right. Again, we're rusty. I think it's understandable. So, so I will just open up with phasers and shoot uh, Katinga C. Okay. So you are going to be rolling a control security on Zines. The Akagi will assist with a weapon security. The difficulty on this is a two. Okay, um, I have the ship. Uh, I have the ship ready to go. Okay. Go I I will spend our last momentum in hopes that I'm going to make some momentum. Okay. Um, and I have an applicable focus of starship tactical systems. Most definitely. And I get us the one you get back. Get that momentum right back. Yep. Okay. So and go then, ahead and roll your damage, and then you need to decide what your versatile is doing. Um. Uh, okay. Oh, so, also, Zion, since I assisted you, you can reroll that zero if you feel like going for it. Ah, good catch. Yes, you can reroll that zero. Um. Sure. So, seventy-five percent chance of getting it. Control security. There we go. All nice. Right, you're up to two momentum. Okay. All right. Um, then the Akagi's phaser banks are eight for their challenge die. Mm-hmm. Um, All right. So you have two momentum from Versatile that you can either spend to... re. You could spend one of those to re-roll the zeros, or uh, what a classic spend is to... Um, add some penetration or some piercing to ignore the resistance, and it's two resistance off for every momentum spent. Okay, so if I dump... So if I dump both momentum, I'd be doing five damage, and they would be negative four on resistance. Yep. Um... Sure, we'll do that. All right. Well, it's a good thing you did, because uh turns out they only have the four resistance. At least I think they do. Let me triple check that, because that actually could matter. Because if they've got five or six, that's, that's going to be a little bit dicey. You'd think I'd have this ready, but, you know. All right. Uh, Katinga, Katinga, Katinga. 86. Katinga. Oh, well, I have good news. Uh, apparently, Katingas are actually scale three. So that's that's even better for you because that means it has even less. Uh, so, yeah, you do smack this thing pretty damn well. And uh, you actually cause a breach. So if you want to roll that breach for me. Uh, system hit, right? Yep. Communication. So... Uh, they're not able to talk to their friends or get orders from their friends for the immediate sort of scene until they fix it. ELH, could I sell you on doing NPC breaches since there are three of them? Uh, yeah, we're, we're not going to do... Oh, I see what you're saying. The actual rules for NPC breaches where they would lose a turn. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd be okay with that. Uh, so three breaches, they're disabled. Mm-hmm. Let me just pull those up, because I believe with the one breach, it's just they lose a turn. They don't lose anything else. Let's double check. Let's see. They also lose two power, but I'm sure you're not mad enough to be tracking their power. Actually, I do keep track of power in most of my encounters, because it has mattered in the past. Uh, let's see. Where yeah, I'll take it. I was going to say, if you know where those rules are off the top of your heads, let me know. I'm just trying to find combat in space, blah, 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 blah. Show me a table. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, to keep things moving, I'm just going to say that uh, each time they take a breach, they just lose a turn. So Majest or Katinga C will not be able to act until everybody else has acted. So your phasers lance out from the Akagi. They smack into the starboard side of the Katinga and leave a devastating tear in the hull uh, along where their communications array are. And you've done uh, quite a good hit. 
Now that is the direct action. You guys now have the option of spending your two momentum to retain the initiative. Now, I have quick to action. Okay. Does that, that apply? Case, it does apply, and you have you basically can retain the initiative for free. Perfect. But I think we had this on Amalthea, though. If he has quick to action, he has to take the action. Correct? correct. No, it says you. It says you and your allies may ignore the first. Then may ignore the normal cost. It. Yep. Then anyone can take it. And I am not interested in going yet. Mainly Get because we haven't been hit yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's try the shenanigans. Um, so if I've got C disabled, could destroy for... them. Well, I was. I don't know. I was thinking of either getting rid of one of them, or now that I have one disabled for a turn, going after a different one. But um, yeah, I'll just continue. You could also. Going. You could also use some extra power to boost up the phasers when you fire. Because I'm probably just going to use that as my action to return the power. Hmm. Never done that before. Uh, yeah, okay. As long as it's not going to... Does it cost me an action to do that? Uh, it's something you determine before you actually roll the challenge die. Uh, gotcha. Off the top of my head, I believe it's one power... For every one additional challenge die that you roll. Okay. Um, then let's do the shenanigan type stuff that we were just talking about. Um, okay. So I'll use strafing run to do attack pattern, but I don't actually move for that. Correct. Yes. You would just enter into attack pattern. Uh, now attack pattern is going to be, I actually just had this up. Uh, attack pattern is going to be a daring and con at a difficulty of two and okay. the ship will be assisting with a weapons and con and the good news is if successful until your next turn zines all attacks made by the akagi reduce in difficulty by one i have the, i have the ship ready to go okay okay um also if we spend energy it has to be two to get one Challenge dice extra. It's two? Okay, good to know. Yep. Um, applicable focus, either tactical systems or helm operations? Both would apply. Okay. And there's our two. There's your two, all you need. So yes, uh, and that is something uh, either I've been doing it wrong for a while, or um, they eroded it in, uh, because it used to be, or at least I thought it used to be, that attack pattern made it so it was also easier to hit you. Hmm. I'll look into that later. But for now, as far as I'm reading, it's just attacks you make. Okay. Then um, using the strafing run talent, um, I'm going to keep the initiative, which costs me zero. Mm -hmm. Well, and... it's a swift task that you would have to do okay. at this point. Okay. Then the swift task to attack then. Mm -hmm. um, and then I will shoot C because I'm at five, which is medium range. I will shoot C again with phasers. Alrighty. Now, um, the way this works is you have already fired phasers, so the difficulty mm -hmm. would go up by one, but you're in attack pattern, so that's negated out. So your overall difficulty mm -hmm. here is just a two. And normally taking swift momentum, swift task momentum spins... Would have also increased it by one, but your talent, but, again, knocks it down. Gotcha. So I'm just at a basic two. Yep. For my difficulty. And this one, again, is control and security, Correct. Correct. It might be that yeah. Miller. It it might be evasive that I was thinking. No, you're you're right. Uh, in my version of the rule book, you got it right. But my version's probably older than the version you have. No, I'm actually looking at the oldest PDF, so I'm willing to bet they eroded it. Oh. Yeah, um, I'm willing to bet they eroded it. Yeah, all all attacks made by the ship reduce. No, no, you're right. It it isn't. It's only our attacks get reduced. And there's nothing about the enemy firing at us. Oh, right. Might have uh, might have been a little bit meaner to the Arcadia folks uh, inadvertently. Sorry, guys. And there's <laughs> there's a, a crit and an extra success on top of the Akagi success, so that's two momentum. Yep, two momentum. You're up to four. And yeah, go ahead and roll me some damage. All right, so before I roll the challenge dice, because mm -hmm. our lovely engineer has reminded me of something I forgot about, mm -hmm. uh, I am going to up the power on the phasers. 
And our current power is 12. Yep. I'm going to spend four power to add two more challenge dice. Okay. Hell yeah. Um, so that'll be ten challenge dice. And I'm going to spend the versatile to say I don't like their resistance and let's just not worry about it. All right. That's got to be enough for two more breaches. That's not only enough for two more breaches, but is enough that uh, unless you tell me otherwise, uh, when you fire again with your phasers, Katinga C goes up like a Christmas tree. Uh, you know what I'm trying to say here. Basically, you shoot it again, and as the volley from your phaser banks hit it, uh, it sort of begins to list to the side, and then another volley hits it, and then it literally explodes uh, into very small chunks and is no longer. So I basically reminded the Klingons that their Katingas are like our Mirandas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Zines, after those two shots, will um, kind of straighten himself up a little bit, and uh, Captain, I pick that one. Very good, number one. I think we're going to send a few Klingons um, to Stovokor today. All right. Today is a good day for them to die, apparently. Apparently. All right. So uh, with that fun, uh, what's going to happen here is uh, it does pass to the Klingons. And uh, what Katinga B is going to do... And again, it's been a while, so i got to remember all my threat spends. So for its first action, it's going to move. And it's going to move quite literally right off your port bow. Oh, and those then... disruptor. Oh, go ahead. I said, oh, those disruptor cannons. Yep. And then I have to spend, I believe it's two threat for them to retain the initiative for them to fire. I believe that's how it works. Um, if not, I'll just spend more threat to compensate. Either way, let's see what those disruptor cannons do. Uh, oh dear. Well, uh, with only a one, uh, the Katinga swoops in, uh, tries to open up with its disruptor cannons, but either because of your attack pattern or because the idiot firing the button for the Klingons is an idiot, misses completely. I like to assume that it still shakes the ship. You know, there's there's a little like turbulence. Mendoza is picking himself off off the floor. Look, sir, I'm sorry. I, I got a little excited. I, I didn't realize we were fighting Klingons. Come on, Mendoza. Get yourself together, man. I'm sorry, sir. In the corner, one of those, like, extinguishers turns on, so it's, like, spraying smoke in the corner for no reason. <laughs> for sure. Oh, and for extra flavor, like one of those uh, bulkheads that has nothing but rocks in them just detonates, but there's nobody in the area, so it's just kind of like, what are you doing? Yeah, there's rocks somehow. There's rocks in the ship. But no actual damage was taken. Let's just be clear on that. Nothing happened to the Ikagi. Can I say that Miller's shirt was torn somehow? Slightly. <laughs> sure. Clearly the force of the attack was so great. Uh, I'm going to use a line from one of my favorite movies. Uh, Captain, you're almost out of uniform. Nice. Anyway, the good news is it's back to you guys. Uh, you have a internal systems, a helm. Uh, actually, no, helm has been used. Uh, so actually, you have sensor operations and internal systems available to you. Now, you can't double up on actions, but it is at increased difficulty. So I am, I'll go. Mm -hmm. I am in engineering, so engineering tasks are reduced by one. Yep. And I'm going to do power management to get us back the power we spent. Okay. Since the shields are fine, there's no damage to fix. I'm not going to transport anything. And you've already chastised Mendoza. Yeah, that was free. That's a free action. <laughs> So yeah. So this uh, is uh, control engineering. Uh, either daring or control engineering, and because you are in main engineering, the difficulty is only a one. Oh, and do um, can I use? I have warp core mechanics or energy weapons as focuses. Can I use one of those? I'll give you warp core mechanics. 
All there right. we go. Get a momentum. So we get one power, and I'm going to use that momentum to immediately get a second power back. Okay. So brings. So we should be you... up to ten. Yep, brings you up to ten. And I believe that puts your momentum at four. Very good. Yeah, I was working on it. I still cannot figure where this delete button is. Uh, it is literally the delete button. It's not the backspace. It's the delete button to the right of that. Or at least on my keyboard, it's to the right of that. Oh, it's... Oh, my God. I'm an idiot. I was looking for a... Like, I was right-clicking on the token looking for a delete button. There you go. You got it. Yay. Oh, my God. Hey, you know, it, it's been a while. Oh dear! Can All right, we but that technically is... keep the initiative even since well they've gone once, so can we keep the initiative again? Uh so no, I think that is something that I'm ninety percent sure on is that once you have retained the initiative once, you cannot during that same round. Like you can't. Do yeah, it I think I think I think that's right. Yeah, that sounds right to me. It's only NPCs that can cheat that because I'm spending threat to do it. Um, you guys as play that's sort of how it balances is you guys as players like can't like front load your actions in combat so that the DM can't do anything, if that makes any sense. Like uh, look at what we already so, did. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's it's pretty damn good what you got going so far. I think Sir Rule is perfect for a scan scan for weakness. If we can get her a turn, she's uh, I was very well equipped for that. Yeah. So we'll go to Sir Rule. Uh, but the Klingons do get to act uh, before Sarul goes. And Katinga A is actually going to open fire on the Majestic Sea Cow. And that is enough. Actually, that, uh, that, uh, that, that's, that's quite a bit of threat for me. Um, it is enough that they completely just, they open up with their disruptor cannons and turn the majestic sea cow into Swiss cheese enough. So that it's entire reactor detonates and I need to look up warp core detonation because that could affect uh, executive shuttle a. Yeah. She's in close range. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 228. 228. Here it is. Uh, da, 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 da. Does three challenge die piercing two damage to all other ships? So I just roll straight challenge die on this. All right. <laughs> oh, that's not good. And I add an yeah, additional yeah. challenge die to this damage equal to the exploding ship scale. Well, the good news it's only a scale three, so that's six six challenge die with Blue's piercing. Yeah, well, it's with a good piercing. thing. Well, it's only it's scale two, thing. so piercing is... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, that's going to be uh, four damage, which is enough, unfortunately, to uh, take out your shields, which, if I recall correctly, you lose... The good news is it's not five. If it was five, your shuttle would be destroyed outright. So, sort of good news. Your shuttle isn't dead, but it's definitely listing in the water. Uh, you could probably recover them later, oh. but they are they are hurting. I was so worried that piercing was ignoring shields. Nah, so piercing oh. ignores resistance. <laughs> so it ignored that would have uh, been real bad. Yeah, that well, would have been real bad. But no, so it ignored uh, two resist or f yeah, it ignored actually four resistance, which the shuttle only had two. So but yeah. Uh, so C cows down, Executive Shuttle A, I'm going to say, is out of combat for the time being. And it now passes back to Sir Rule. So for her, it's a control science difficulty one, and the ship assists with sensor security. Mm -hmm. But the task increases by one for every range outside of close. So we could scan our good buddy here for no increased difficulty. So just difficulty one for. Yep. Very, She's really equipped well for this. So yeah, control science for uh, Sarul and a sensor security from the Akagi. Sensors. Their operation? Sensor security. operation applies. Okay, I'm going to try to roll here. Everyone. I think I've gotten everyone so far for the ship. You've been doing pretty damn well. All 
All right, so yes. that gets you full momentum, in fact. And yes, you have a uh, scan for weakness, which I will designate with that. And for everybody, what that does is that gives our next attack uh, piercing two quality. So we ignore two resistance per effect roll. And let's say for any bonus D20s that are purchased for the next attack, we get plus one challenge dice for each. Now, uh, the next thing I have to ask is, uh, do you guys want to do an action with your shuttles? Now, I'm not going to give each of your shuttles their own turn. You can just move one of them as an action, as part of a round. Um, my thoughts is... What Shuttle have... C is in range to fire its phasers. It is. And they're not that... They're... They're not that bad. Just a suggestion. I'm not saying we do it. Sure. Well, apparently, uh, past me was doing something right because some of the executive shuttles actually have roles attached to them. Looks like if you highlight uh, executive shuttle A, there should be an executive roles button for you guys to push. I don't know why it's not on the other shuttles, but for executive A... Which one do you guys think B or A for them to attack? Well, A is the one that's um, listing and no, no, he means disabled. the Katingas. Oh, yeah, the, sorry, the Katingas. Which one should the shuttles attack? Which could... well, um, with that pier with the Pierce two, that means Shuttle C could has a chance to do some actual damage. But I think that only applies to our ship, to, to Akagi, not to the yeah, shuttle. Yeah, it specifically is the oh, best attack, so yeah, which, only the Akagi. Which is why I'm thinking if C attacks Maybe Katinga just... A, I'm fairly confident that I'm going to make Katinga B into Swiss cheese. I like that. But Katinga A is, has got the leader of this little flotilla on board, so I'd like to bring him a little pain until we can get to him. Oh, I'm I'm going to bring the pain to him, because un unless he decides to close with us, I'm going to shove torpedoes up his ass. I'm just saying. <laughs> I like that. So if, yeah, the shuttles can give a something to worry about until we get to it. Good. It's a good Rangers use for him. Here. And shuttle C is piloted by uh, Vran, so he actually has real stats. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And hey, he should have um, he should have determination too, right? Because we've brought him into play at least at least twice. If you've given him a value, he does, and this would count as an activation. So if you want to give him a value, you may certainly do so. Uh. I don't remember yeah, who's in medium range. I think, yeah, firing his phaser, burning his determination, just to see if he could even take down their shields. It would be there helpful you... if he could drop their shields, because yeah, then there's really nothing stopping the torpedo? Yeah, one torpedo hit would do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm throwing a salvo at it, but still, if one torpedo gets in... Just saying. So Riley, you created Vran. What's his what's his value that we're gonna use? Oh. Um I don't know any good Russian sayings off the top of my head. I was muted and I said a good one. In Soviet Russia, phaser phasers shoot you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so so I guess it's right. Soviet Saria. Phasers shoot you. Yeah. Shoot. It's I'm taking it in. Okay. It's in there. It's done. All right. So you can either spend that determination to start with two successes, or you can save it in case he fails. No, let's just do it. Okay. So let's you're going to start with two successes. So I still... I... I still roll one, right? You still roll two dice because what basically spending determination like this does is you Bye. start with a third dice, which is already rolled a one. 
So he is oh. rolling a control and security, and the shuttle will assist with a weapon security. Um, does his focus in guerrilla tactics f uh, apply here? I'm going to say no, because this is pretty straightforward. This isn't like the shuttle coming out of a nebula or the sun's corona or something like that. So unfortunately, no. All right. So we need to see something from the shuttle here. Did we use his determination though? That's oh no, you're right. So this is for momentum at this point. And the shuttle is weapon security. Correct. And we're momentum capped, and then from phasers too. So I think we just go all out. Yep, you have four floating momentum, including the two from um, from versatile. Okay. Can I use momentum to buy uh, extra challenge dice? Uh, no. Well, let's say this, because now that I think about it, I think you have to declare if you're using the power prior to you rolling, because if you miss, you lose the power kind of a thing. Um, so the only way you can buy extra dice... Actually, I don't think there is one. Um, you could spend one to re-roll damage... Uh, but otherwise it's a flat one momentum, one damage. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll use it to buy extra damage. I don't want to use any extra power because the shuttles have almost none. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to, in case something goes bad, I want to leave them with the ability to actually move around and do something. Okay. Well, let's, yeah, let's see what you end up when you roll the dice. You might end up not really even needing it anyway. Right. Okay, so you're doing three damage at the moment, and would you like to add uh, piercing to that? Would you like to add extra damage to that? What's the play? Piercing. Okay, so it's one momentum for two resistance. Um, so these phasers are also versatile, right? Yes, and I'm including that. So you have four at the moment you can spend on this attack. Um, I would like to use as much as I can to get rid of resistance. Okay, how many are you spending? That'd be two, right? I think. Well, so I'm looking. So we got a total of four successes. So we got two. Yeah, we've got two momentum from our rolls, and we got two momentum for versatile. So we have four momentum to spend. If we spend two momentum for piercing to bypass resistance, that gives us two other momentum left. I think we use one to re-roll that zero, and then we use one for damage. Actually, I, you know what? No, the most that zero could do is one anyway, so let's just do two for damage. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that. Five, that's a five, so that's perfect. That's, that's another breach. It is indeed. So, uh, two. Vran, how would you like to flavor uh, your phaser strike from Shuttle C as it opens up on the Katinga? I think it's very Babylon, uh, Battlestar Galactica where the shuttle just pivots on, on the spot. And just sprays space with uh, phasers. And you just see it lance across the side of the ship. And the shields just drop. I like it. And uh, <laughs> and he's he's sitting there behind the controls just laughing his head off. I like it a lot. All right. Well, uh, the good news is that also prevents them from doing anything else this turn. Which means when it comes to a fresh turn... Um, they, so end of the round, I, I, I guess I should say that. So end of the round. So this is the end of round one. Uh, all of their disabling effects go away because they basically just got their end of round nullified. Um, so it comes back around to Katinga B. So B is going to get an attack on you guys before anything else, but all your actions refresh. All right. So. Can Katinga B get a good hit on you guys before you guys blow it up is the question. Survey says it can. I'm going to need you to take. Let's see. That is six, seven, eight damage. Oh, um, I understand this now. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I was going to ask, do they still have the increased difficulty for us with the attack pattern and everything? Attack pattern only messes with you. It's evasive, you're thinking, that makes it more difficult to hit. Okay. Um, gotcha. 
So yeah, uh, I'm actually going to spend a threat to re-roll those zeros. So that's three zeros. I get to re-roll. It's an additional three damage because the disruptors have vicious one on them. So that's a grand total of 11 damage, if I can math correctly. No. I think that's two breaches. Make sure I'm doing my math oh. correctly here. So that's eight, nine, 10, 11. Yes, yeah, so it is 11 damage. Which, Reduced uh, to six because of our scale. Oh, that's right. Sorry, resistance. Yeah. So six damage. Still, still a breach. Still a breach. And our shields yeah. take a hit. Yep, your shields definitely take a hit. All right, let's see where your breach is. This could matter. So your engines, which, again, could matter. Uh, so you immediately lose, uh, I believe it's one power. And until you, actually it's two power. So you're back down to eight. And until uh, the internal systems officer, a.k.a. Riley, performs the restore minor action, all tasks that are assisted by the engines or require power Increase in both difficulty and complication range by one. So basically, to fire phasers, you would be at a difficulty three at this point. So yeah, they uh, they get a nice hit on you as they open up, this time, the tactical officer for the Katinga. He actually shows that he knows what he's doing. And uh, a hole uh, opens up near main engineering. Not quite enough to actually take out personnel, but still a hefty heat. And this time, when consoles explode, Riley, uh, Mendoza says, Sir, I think they actually hit us this time. Actual parts fly out. Mm -hmm. Not just rocks. Uh, would you like me to go next so I can fix that right away? Entirely up to you guys, because it is your guys' turn to act. Because I could go, then we could spend momentum to go again, and then you could blow that guy up. Well... So, you could temporarily fix that. And then I could also raise the shields. Or, uh, I could fix the shields or add more power. Because no matter what, I need, I need to move unless we're going to have more um, difficulty because we're at close range. Yeah, so, so let me it. go first. Okay. I could do both of these things because one's a minor action. One's, one's my actual action. Okay, sounds good. So I would like to take the minor action to uh, restore systems on the engines. Okay. So that complication and then, and difficulty goes away. So essentially I, I redirect power, mm -hmm. and then I will regenerate shields. Okay. And the difficulty of this goes down by one because I'm in engineering. Yep. Which means that uh, you're rolling a difficulty zero, uh, control and engineering, assisted by the ship's structure engineering. And could I could I use a momentum to get an extra dice? Sure. I mean, it's difficulty zero. You basically are rolling to I... see how much floating you get. Yeah, I know. No. Okay. All right, so you get one of that back with one floating. And the ship is structure engineering. Yep, structure engineering. So let's see if you get any more. All right, so uh, you have two floating. So I will. I get two points of shields for succeeding. Mm -hmm. I will spend both floating to get to fully repair the shields. All right, shields go all the way back up. Now, it also does have a power requirement of one, so you do go down to seven power. That's okay. I could fix that. I could fix that! <laughs> All right, so that is your internal systems action. Uh, are you spending momentum to keep the initiative? Yes, we have to. Yeah, I'll, I'll spend two to keep the initiative. Okay. So Riley, have... don't you do that for free? Don't you? Have, didn't you see you have a talent that lets us? That's action, only only first round. Only once, only once per combat. Oh, uh, and only on the Unless, first round. Mm -hmm. This is a technically a separate combat, right? We took a tea break. No. we we <laughs> relaxed. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Okay, that was just us in engineering until we actually got hit. All right. Um. So, at close range, the difficulty would go from a 2 to a 3 to hit with phasers? Correct. 
All right. So uh, I'm smiling. This is bad when I'm smiling. Um, all right. Uh, I'm going to do the exact same kit that I just did. Mm-hmm. So I would like to attack pattern. Okay. Um, and attack pattern was daring and con. con. Mm-hmm. Difficulty two. And yeah. the ship assisting with weapons con. Um, I can do the ship. I, I'm waiting for Riley to get me that hot one success. <laughs> there it is. Uh, I'm not going to spend um, momentum on this. Okay. It's it's a. I was gonna say, Zines, when you get around to rolling for your shot, it's important to buy extra dice because that's how we get extra damage through scan for weakness. Gotcha, but this isn't my shot. This is just the attack pattern roll, right? right. Oh, that's right. You're you're flying. Look, we'll focus. Yes, and we get one anyways. Yep. So you're up to uh, five momentum total. Okay. So all attack patterns done. Um, I will keep the initiative to do flyby. Uh, swift task. So that. Uh, oh, I think we're doing it backwards. So you need to at least. Let me look at your talent a little bit more closely here. Uh, fly by. When you use the momentum, you do not increase. Okay, so I take that back. I think what it's meant to do is either you retain the initiative to do an attack pattern, and then for fly by, I think you're meant to do um, almost like a fire than evasive for fly by. Because it specifically says for flyby when it's your task is to pilot a vessel or a vehicle. It doesn't say to attack with flyby. Okay. Okay. Then yeah, we're I think we're doing it backwards. I should be using fl the swift tasks with flyby to do the attack pattern. Or that or evasive. So sort of the way okay. you would set it up is your first action would be so you you kind of have two options for your quote unquote optimal turn is option one is to keep the initiative an attack pattern and then swift okay. task to just open fire or you spend the two momentum to um to keep the initiative then you okay. do an attack and then you do a swift task and that's another two so that would be a four momentum cost but then you could do a swift task and you could do an evasive which would not increase in difficulty okay so you're setting so, like a good con officer should be. It's just you yeah. know, some aren't synergizing completely the way we would like. Right. Okay. So then I do the attack pattern. Um, I will keep the initiative, but I don't have to spend any momentum. Uh, no. So you would have to swift task, which would cost uh, two momentum. Assuming oh. you are swift tasking to then open fire. Yes. So then... Huh. Okay. Sure. I will spend two momentum to do that. Okay. If 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 I may sign, sorry to complicate the waters a, li a little further. So I think your your attack pattern is to lower the difficulty, but we've got so much momentum flowing around, and we're going to get so much more. I don't know if that difficulty. Yeah. We're going to throw lots of dice on your attack. I don't know if that one difficulty is going to be a. I just found something. Go for it. So. Anytime a flight controller succeeds at impulse, attack pattern, evasive action, or ramming speed, they may spend two momentum to increase the difficulty of attacks against the ship by one. That's because of our improved impulse. So we could actually, if he does the attack pattern, we could spend two more momentum to make attacks against us harder. That's oh. probably what we were thinking yeah, of before. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Well, okay. what would you like to do, Walter? Um... Well, I, I was going to get around the difficulty of the extra difficulty of being in close by um, spending my determination to get two automatic successes, then loading up oh, the yeah. dice to literally just get a shite ton of momentum for the uh, scan for weaknesses. That was my original plan. Um, so I, I'm confused now. So <laughs> how would you guys like me to do this? <laughs> Sorry, I was meta metagaming it too much. No, it's cool. I 
it's been so long because I'm normally not the guy firing the weapons anymore. He's the guy telling you to fire the weapons. It's a good so way. Wait. Or I'm the guy in engineering putting everything back together <laughs> when my captain runs us into the middle of like four or five ships at the same time. So we've already done the attack pattern, right? Yes, the attack pattern has happened. So we question. can choose to do that. We can choose to do the improved impulse drive thing after. We don't have to do it right away. We can see what's left. If you and, if you do blow them away, then we can do yeah. it. Okay, so I'm going to spend two momentum to do the swift task to be able to shoot, correct? Correct, so that'll bring you down to three okay. momentum. I'll get rid of those two. Ha, I did it right that time. Um, and uh, so I will go ahead and shoot. Um, I'm going to dump my determination. Okay. Um, and I'm going to use the value of no stranger to violence. Certainly applies. Um, to get me two automatic successes. Okay. Um, and to shoot is control security. Yep. And the ship assists um, you with weapons security. And I will spend the three momentum. Ah. The three momentum we have left to get me three to get me one more two. dice. Two. Well, yeah, two would get you one. Technically. Oh, we can only have five total, though. Yeah, I'll say, so technically, you've already spent your determination. You've already bought an additional die, which will trigger your scan for weakness, because determination counts as a die. Okay. And you've already got so spend the two, two successes you need. So any You could more... spend two to get one extra. No, no, no. This this isn't power. This is, this is determination yeah. counts as okay. a die. No, but... He, okay, he could get another d20, right? But he would have to spend two to get it because he's already yeah. bought one dice. Yes, you are correct. Um, and we get an extra challenge dice for each additional d20 that he buys. So if he buys that fourth challenge dice, in determination's the third, that's two extra, chal that's two extra challenge dice to roll on damage. Now. Yes, you guys are correct. Yeah, the three of us, I think, were thinking the same thing. And then... Yeah, it was the three of us thinking the same. You were thinking something different, but mm -hmm. we were all coming to the same point. Right. Um, so I will actually do that. I'll spend two more momentum. Um, we're going to completely overkill the hell out of this oh, ship. Oh, yeah, you you're going to blow the hell out of this. Though. I was literally told by my captain to pick one and destroy it, so that's what I'm doing. Um, so my three dice... Don't roll focus, complications. Absolutely. That could be embarrassing. No, don't put that evil in our heads. All right, so that's well. three successes for the for our audio viewers or mm -hmm. listeners. So um, that's four momentum total. All right. And then yeah, oh, uh, one too many. Yeah. So let's see. So you bought two dice. So add two challenge dice to your normal, which uh, what is that? Twelve for you guys. Uh, takes us up to ten. Takes you. Up we're to 10. normally eight. Okay. Um, and I'm just you gonna do let... have piercing two on this, which means every single effect you roll ignores two resistance. I think <laughs> all the resistance. Just there's there's a feeling here. I feel so my so for our audio listeners, uh, I just rolled a wall of effects. Uh huh. That's. Ten successes. Yep. And with... uh, I'm just going to throw it out there. You spend two momentum. It no longer exists. Good deal. I like that deal. Yeah, you've got the momentum from the phasers anyway. Oh, yeah. So we can just spend the ones from the phasers. No, you to get have rid of to it. spend normal. You can't use versatile for this. Okay. No, I was just. I wasn't trying to be cheeky. I was just, I'm just trying to ask. With you. I'm just messing with um, you. So, yeah, I would like to clear that from my captain's screens. How 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 devastating do you make a statement here? Um, I shoot it, blow it up, and then I fly through it. There's there's no bridge left, I assume. Like the whole front section of that ship. Uh, I would like to blow it up so bad that I take over its hexagon. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I love it. Alright, well, uh Katinga A, seeing all this happen is uh gonna do something you're not gonna like uh and i'm gonna spend enough threat here to end the scene because what katinga a does is, is it swoops in it very quickly tractors in executive shuttle a and then it 
And once the shuttle A is in its bay, it turns, warps away. But you are out of combat. It has gone to warp. There are mechanics for following it at warp. But for all intents and purposes, it has stolen shuttle A. Uh, I'm not going to wait for Miller to tell me to follow it. How much how much power do we think a Katinga has? Yeah, so that's the thing. So in order to catch up to something at warp, you have to spend more power than it spent. It, it's and have, fired. And we only have six. Mm -hmm. Wait, did it even fire? Yeah, no. it fired on the... Fire, uh, yeah, yeah, it fired... Oh, yeah. And then... A tractor beam is probably a power two, right? Possibly. Well, I mean, it's a power cost. Can um, I, before we go, can, before we go after them, can I try to restore some power? I will say that the more time you spend here, the further away it gets. Okay. So um, we should just go and, and see. Well, here's here's a question. With both Miller and Zines, I think Miller's a veteran. Mm -hmm. um, yep, and especially a veteran of fighting Klingons. Um, is the Akagi faster than the Katinga? It at can maximum be warp if you have the power for it. The problem is, is that you're below half power at the yep. moment. The reason I was thinking of that was to take a turn for um, Riley to get us more power back, and then following it. The one thing I will say on that is after a certain point, you start to lose them in the weeds because they drop out of sensor range, cloak, and then hide somewhere. Okay. Uh, is there a way of spinning threat to get more power? Uh, there is, yes. Oh, oh, you meant for you to get more power. Um, yes. I'm going to say any threat you throw at me, I'm just going to add to their power. I think what, what we do is I... we spend all of our power and we just go after them and we try to build up power as we're chasing them, but we've got to get in the... Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, sidebar from that conversation, I'm going to roll the challenge dice to get my uh, determination back from a veteran. Yep, make sure to do that. Okay. Could matter. But I've been uh, holding on to my determination. I can always give it back to you too, Zines, if we get into combat. And no effect, so... Um, come back, unfortunately. Okay, uh, which is fine. Um then, yeah, I'm just going to punch it. Punch it. All right. So uh, uh, let me put us on the screen. Successfully close first. enough to fire torpedoes. We literally just have to get me close enough to fire torpedoes. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can go back and pick them up later. They'll, they'll be fine. But you do leave your shuttle B and shuttle, sh shuttle C behind as you jump to maximum warp that you can manage in pursuit of this Katinga. Um, and... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, as we jump to warp to follow him, I'll, um, through Fredrickson, obviously, but I'll send a message to Vran mm -hmm. to take over, um, uh, basically search and rescue for anybody that's around. Okay. Until we get back. That can happen. And I walk over to Zines number one. I want to be clear. There isn't a neutral zone. There isn't a border in this galaxy that's going to stop us from getting the shuttle crew back. Whatever it takes, however hard you have to push this ship, I, I want I want that shuttle back. I, Captain, uh, perhaps you can apply some leverage to Commander Riley and his crew to get me more power. Oh, we'll do. I and hit the button I'm, on my console. Mr. Riley. Yes, Captain. I need every bit of power that this Excelsior class vessel can get out. We need to you overtake that vessel and we need to do it now. Now what you I'm already doing... have it, but we we are limited, sir. We we did spend a lot of energy in that combat. I can't guarantee that we can actually maintain maximum warp for more than just a few minutes here. Uh, if if need be, you can cut phasers. I'm not going to need them. I just need to get a torpedo shot. So what I'll say is you guys have two options that come to my mind, and you guys can suggest more of your own. But here's what I'm thinking. So option one, 
you try to overload the engines. That's going to be a daring engineering difficulty three, complication range 16 to 20. But if you succeed, you are able to gain back some power and, you know, uh, potentially catch up with this Katinga. Option two is you start stealing from other systems. And that's going to be a daring engineering again at a difficulty overall of two. Uh, now that said, uh, you would have to take power from phasers, from medical, and from probably a few shuttle bays. Um, so it's doable, but you would lose the ability to deploy shuttles to deal with anything in sick bay and to more or less, um, fire your phasers. I think I said that already, but you know what I'm trying to get at. Um, but as Zine says, you don't need power to fire a photon. So I think that's a fair trade. I'm, I'm completely okay with cutting the shuttle base for now because we can always bring him back up when we pick up the three shuttles. And I don't need phasers because they're just going to cause us more power. And honestly, uh, I'm I'm just going to wing a shot with the uh, torpedoes. I just need to make sure that we have momentum that I can I can spin. Can for I the say? Shot. Can I say what I actually do though? Sure. Because Riley doesn't like to ask for permission if he thinks he has to do something. Mm -hmm. I go for option A. You go for I'm going to overload the warp engines. Um, daring engineering. Yep, daring engineering. So, at a difficulty of I am, after accounting for your main engineering. So if I... So it's difficulty three. Mm -hmm. uh, I am burning my determination. Okay. And um, I'm going to spend the remaining two momentum... Okay. To buy an extra dice. Okay. And I'm using my um, because I'm good. At, I'm I have a talent in warp core mechanics. I know how to push a ship to its limits. Mm -hmm. And with my star cross metal, I'm going to double my discipline for this. Very nice. Now just remember the complication range is 16 to 20, and if you roll a complication here, it will mean a breach to engines. Which mm -hmm. would immediately knock you out of warp. So this is kind of a Hail Mary, just so we're all on the same page. Okay, maybe I don't buy the extra dice then. Because I only need one success on my two dice. So I'll leave those, I'll leave the momentum. Leave the I'll momentum. roll two dice. Okay. And I can I can then burn one to re-roll a dice, right? Uh, no, the only way to re-roll dice is to use a determination. Hmm. Or if you have, so like, Advisor in Miller's part. Like, because Miller has Advisor, I think he has Advisor. Um, yeah. If he assists someone, then they can use a, a D20. But because this is Riley acting of his own volition, you, you're the, the only option to reroll that you have is going to be that determination. Yeah. So, Riley, if you would tell us that you were doing that, we might be able to work that out. Yeah, but if you want to take it on your own, I think you're right. I think it no, I think I would just do it. If he just does it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um. So it's daring engineering. Difficulty does, three. Does is the ship it better if I buy the dice? Uh, the ship does not assist on this. This is purely Riley's engineering okay. acumen. Okay. It's. I will save the determination. Okay. I will spend one momentum to get an extra dice. I'll roll three dice. Use the star cross metal though. So ten or under is a is, is a, a crit. crit. Mm -hmm. Riley can do it. Oh dear. Oh dear. But you can reroll the animation. Those are both. What did I get here? I can't read that. Are those both? One's a twenty, they... and one's a sixteen. So that's two complications at the moment. Okay, so I do have to. I'm going to reroll. Okay. Do I reroll everything? You may reroll as many dice as you wish. I might as well reroll them all, right? Well, you got one success there. Yeah, no, oh, I'll keep the success, reroll the other two. That's the best bet. Oh, anyways. actually, that's two. You rolled an eight, so with your medal, that was that was two successes. Yeah, so you do have two successes with that at the moment. 
So yeah, so I'll re roll the two complications. Yeah, re roll those complications. Let's see what you get. And that is enough. There it is. That yeah, there that's a lot. There's sort of a, a high pitched, not a squeal, but a very pi- high pitched hum that sort of permeates the ship as Riley acts of his own volition and does what Scotty would do best and quite literally sees a red line on the engine, says, screw that, makes a new red line. And Zines, you have a cornucopia of power that is now available to you. Um, I don't know how to read this. Is this technically six successes? Yep. So we get three momentum back? Yep. Uh, we got, yeah, we got three momentum. Or no, we got four momentum and we had one already. No, you should have been because... at zero momentum. So you should have been at yeah, so six Yeah, I burned successes. it all. Yeah, so okay, six so we're successes. At four. Yeah, you should be at three, I think. That makes sense to me. I think you're a three. Um, but yeah, Zines, with this additional power, you can't conceivably catch up the, to the Katinka. Well, okay. So, did he He didn't burn the determination. That's where I'm getting the extra one from. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to catch the Katinga. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get me within long range. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, does it look like their shields are still down? I mean, you're at warp, so technically neither shields are up at the moment. Good point. Um, then I am going to introduce them to my good friend, Torpedo Salvo. Okay. Now, what I'm going to say on this is because their your shuttle is in their bay, you do run the risk, if you roll a complication, of detonating your shuttle in the process. I was going to say, number one... Remember when we fired on that Constellation ship? This time, let's really disable, okay? I don't think you can make that choice with torpedoes. You really can't. I'm just trusting that Zines can pull it off. <laughs> Maybe he hits just the front of the ship? Like, just one torpedo into its bridge? I I was going to ask about that, of doing a salvo to blow that neck off. I would say and... that would increase the difficulty by one, so that would be a grand total difficulty of four. But the question possible. is, do they have any breaches? Oh, they do have a breach. The shuttle got them. Yes, Dang it. They yes. Have so you could actually breach. destroy them. Yep. Okay. That's where the difficulty is, is because they already have the one breach. Any damage you do to them is going to be an additional breach because the shields are down. And torpedoes have high yield. So even if you did just one damage with the torpedo, it would completely blow the thing up. There, There's almost nothing. I, I mean, I can't shoot torpedoes. At this point. Torpedoes there, are there is maybe no I should try to here. diplomacy at first. If we get close enough, we could transport. You could transport. Who cares about the shuttle? True. That's we just true. want the people. Okay. that's We can do that too. So I I guess I will pilot us closer. Mm-hmm. Um, so that way we can get a transporter lock on our people. And after we get transporter lock and get our people back, then I'm going to blow them up. Okay. I have, I have a plan. So Zines, while you're doing this, I want to try to get them on the view screen and try to buy you some time because they could still be shooting at us too while we're trying to get closer, which is exactly what they want if they want to use those disruptors. They were uh, they were actually going to do something, but go ahead and uh, Fredrickson will patch you through. What do you want to say? Captain Oroshi... You know how this is going to go. You've seen your other two vessels already. We've already sent them uh, to the Klingon afterlife. I don't know much about Klingon honor, but how's it going to help your ancestors, the honor of your ancestors, if you continue to run from a fight? I, I just, I expected more from Klingon words. I faced, I faced Klingons in the past, but I was just, maybe I was used to a different caliber of Klingon. Hmm. I'm going to let you do a uh, presence command here, but I'm going to keep the difficulty a secret. So you may roll as many dice for as many successes as you think is appropriate. Command presence, maybe? Yeah, that's what, did, did I not say presence command? 
I am I cut out and then do that part. Um, I got that determination. I guess I could go for it. Would you consider this stopping hostility? Oh yeah. So that gets me a dice. Uh, the determination would get me a fourth dice. What do you guys think? Should I spend our three momentum to get the fifth dice? Sure. Actually, let's save that because if you do have to fire torpedoes, you might need you might need some help. I think four dice. Yeah, I think four dice with two auto successes is probably the way to go. We right, would need the say... we would need the momentum for the transporters. I think. Yeah. Because I'm not like I'm not like a specialist. No, but we do have one. Happens to be a very angry Tellarite. It happens he's to be actually, someone with a really unfortunate name. Mm -hmm. This whole time he's been sleeping in, in one of the transporter rooms. He has no idea what's going on. <laughs> the O'Brien effect. Okay, would you consider leadership or diplomacy or tactics a focus on any of that? I would say a combination of all three. Okay, so I'm going to roll three dice. I've already got two successes from my determination. I'm going to do command present. Mm -hmm. I see four, four successes. successes. The DC here was a five, unfortunately. So uh, you do get a response, Miller. But it's not the one you'd hope, where Oroshi cuts his engines and you talk this out like gentlemen. The answer is a photon coming straight at you. So, they are going to hit you. And that's important because, yeah, they're going to do four damage with shields are down. So that's two breaches if you take any to engines. Um... Don't we have resistance, or do the torpedoes cut through it? You don't have shields at the moment, which is the problem. Oh, I see what you're saying. Your innate resistance. Yeah. I see what you're saying. So it might just be one breach, yeah. yeah we're a so scale five ship, so if they do four damage, we have five resistance, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to spend one threat to reroll those two zeros, and that is my last threat. I have nothing left. Okay, so it didn't get me anything, so it would have just been five damage, which again doesn't even get past your resistance. Um, so a torpedo does impact the hull, but bulkhead's hull it like it like skips off the surface of the the hull. Yeah, it it doesn't like detonate across you, but that is the answer you get. Um, I assume it does a lot of damage just to like an area that doesn't matter. Um. So like should the mess hall. The mess hall, yeah. Mess hall. We lost so, a cook. No, no. Who's cook. gonna make the transporter roll? It's I would ass, assume right? we, weak ass and I will assist. Alright. Well, at the moment, you're still at long range. Uh which means that your difficulty, let's tally this out. So the default task is Control Engineering, Difficulty 2, assisted by the ship's Sensors Engineering, which means the difficulty goes down to a 1. It's plus 1 because the target is not on a transporter pad. The range goes up by 2 because you're at long range. So that's a Difficulty 4, um, Control Engineering, assisted by the Sensors Engineering. Well... With control engineering, weak ass is sitting on a 14 with a focus. And this is activating um, him, so you can't give him something. He, he already has a He has a, a value. value. You can give him another one, or you can give him another focus. Hell, you can give him um, a talent if you really want to do. I don't think there are any transporter-related focuses. I'm or talents, sorry. Of, but... Um, you could give him that augment talent where he gets an auto success, but that's gaming it heavily. 
No, he's he's been an augment the whole time. Don't you guys remember that? <laughs> it's like Bashir. He was just good at it. Yeah, I I don't know that. <laughs> I was thinking of a value to where he could spend determination because the value he have now he has now isn't going to help him at all. Um. Yeah, I'm I don't not... know. I think I think we could we could sell we could sell ELH on that. I think we could do it. I I don't think so. The crew uh, that are not on this ship are a part of his record keeping. No. So by the crew being absent, it's really bothering. He really needs to get those crewmen back on board so we can have a full ship comp. That's no. Okay, then how about this for value? <laughs> Success through stubbornness. Sure, that'll that that'll say what apply. All right. Well. Okay. Oh. Before um, I will, I technically burn my determination, right? I I had to do that to reroll, yep. or could I have just spent momentum? Uh, no, to reroll you have to spend the determination. Okay, perfect. Just making sure. Um. Okay. So, uh, I'll throw um weak ass's roll. I'm gonna spend his determination using the focus or the value we just gave him. Okay. So he starts with two successes. Um, we need four successes. I will spend one momentum to give him... No, at add this point I have two. to spend two momentum mm -hmm. to get him a third rolled dice. Mm -hmm. um, so we will do that. Um, and then Riley's going to assist and the ship, or just the ship? Just the ship on this one. And applicable focus, he has transporters as a focus. Mm -hmm. Wait, so hope. you can have five dice total, right? Yep. For a roll, that's it? Yep. Yeah. How many is weak guess rolling? With the auto success, that's one. And He's then three dice? Four. Yeah. He bought so a four. It's, so it's me or the ship? It has to be the ship, because the ship has to, in order to get the difficulty you want, the ship has to roll the sensors engineering. Does advanced sensor suites... I, I accounted Apply. for it already. Okay. So what is it for the ship? Sensor. I was Sensor muted for a while. I was actually having a whole conversation. I'll roll for the ship. Hopefully my luck comes back. Nope. Fortunately not. All right. So I need to see two successes from weak ass here. That is got two it. successes. So weak ass With a moment is able to report. Sir, I've got them. Okay. All right, Mr. Zions, I think you've had your finger on the button for a while. I already hit the button. Okay. It is a like difficult... in mid in mid Miller uh, inspirational speech. I just hit the button. Okay. So if you spend the two momentum, I will let you blow it up, but there will be a consequence for this. Otherwise, I'm going to have you actually roll for the shot. So what are we looking at for difficulty for the actual shot? Difficulty three, control plus security, assisted by the ship's weapon security. So it's a. I will say, if we disable it, it's probably good because then we could maybe get some more answers. If we destroy it, then we don't know anything more than we know now. And again, if you fire torpedoes, even if you do one damage with the torpedo, because it's high yield, that ship's gone. Okay, well, I really want to blow it up, but... Uh... Yeah, I'm not gonna go. Oh wait, wait, wait! Can we can we target can we target their engines? That would increase specifically the point... difficulty four. And again, if you use photons, it's still the problem of high yield. What you could do is use your phasers, and because the phasers are rated for medium, and you're shooting them at long, they become difficulty three instead of difficulty two. And unless, as long as you keep it below five damage with your phasers, you would only inflict the one breach would be enough to stop them. But if you do five or more damage with your phasers, then that's enough to kill them. Okay, I'll I'll just take the shot with the phasers at uh, long range, um, which is difficulty three. Mm -hmm. 
Um, It'll be four if we target their engines. So I think we just got to fire. Because mm-hmm. the second breach, no matter where it is, will disable them, I think, right? Destroy in this instance. Oh. So they must have taken two breaches already. Mm-hmm. Well, the good thing is with phasers, we could not use penetration, you know, and not reduce the damage. So we, we could actually play with the damage a little bit more than we can with photon. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. I, I've i already resigned to I'm that I'm shooting phasers. Um, so, um, control, security. What about a controlled tachyon burst to short circuit the power systems of the Klingon vessel? I would say it could be done. You would have to move into medium range <laughs> in order to be completely effective, though. I think the phasers are more likely. Okay. Anyways. Okay. So I already, they are going to keep shooting at us, too. That's another thing to that's consider. That's the thing, is that... And, and to be fair, Riley is already done all his crazy stuff and isn't really part of this. Mm-hmm. He's probably okay. not even back from the transporter room. I need three successes, ship helping, have the focus. Um, I can really only... I, I don't have enough momentum to buy two dice. Could buy one. Well, yeah. Uh, you can always give him threat. True. Um, yeah, why not? I'll like give one- you threat. Well, there's That's one. Right. Yeah, screw it. I'll I'll just give you a threat to for the fourth die. All right. Complication. <laughs> we'll deal with that in a moment. But that is enough successes. So I now need you to roll your full challenge die. Could we give you our last momentum to get rid of the complication? No, it's too momentum to get rid of the complication. Okay. Ah! Alright, so that is four damage. You do not know its resistance. Do you want to do anything with your versatile two? I think... I think its resistance is... Ah, oh, we knew... I think we knew it. I think we had it before, it's and I've never forgotten. Three. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, resistance resistance was three we could spend a momentum and re-roll those zeros but that's dangerous what if we took one oh shoot if we, if we if we use both of them for penetration we get rid of the resistance we still do four damage which isn't enough for another breach oh there you know what their shields are their down. shields are down yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't matter one point of damage, damage is enough for a breach yep okay so, then, so they're dead uh you know what? I'm I'm gonna play fast and loose with this. Uh, I'm not gonna spend those floating momentum from versatile mm-hmm. on penetration. I'll spend it on something else that doesn't really matter. Okay. And just do this four damage to him and hope that the one point like carves out their engine and it falls out. We could do power loss. Take two power off. They they've got to deal with power just like we do. Mm-hmm. Power That's loss true. is a good uh, good call. That'll work. Yeah, we'll do that. I'll I'll cut their power, but then I'll just oh. do four. Four damage to okay. him and hope that I'm right in my thinking that they have three resistance. All right. so but I'm almost positive it's four. Your phaser banks charge up and fire a uh, mighty shot of uh, excited energy towards the Katinga class. And uh, immediately the effects are obvious as not only does the ship lose what power it had remaining... Uh, it also completely drops out of warp, which allows you to catch it almost instantly. Um, as soon as we catch it, uh, catch up to it, um, or as soon as I see it drop out of warp, I'll drop out of warp, and I would like to hit him with a tractor beam. Done. Um, and uh, I'll uh, kind of turn my head over uh, to look back at Miller. Um, Captain... I have um, reeled us in a big one. Commander, where exactly are we in relation to the, to the Klingon neutral zone? Uh, checking? Nowhere close. Uh, so we're, we're still, still the good, Federation Captain. Side of the border? 
I think we're still good, Captain. Hmm. So, Mr. Cerule, mm -hmm. how would That's you feel good. like breaking into that com that Klingon computer system? I want a full dump of their main computer. It's very possible they're going to detonate that ship anytime. Just pushing a few buttons here, sir, and oh, look at that. It's already done. Um, can I scan that ship for life signs um, or maybe have, like, help Cerule scan that ship for life signs, specifically looking for... Uh, any Denobulans, and also that ambassador. Okay. Uh, since we're, you know, coming up on two hours here, what I'm going to say is that uh, the ambassador does show up on scans. He is alive and apparently on that ship. Um, Let's pull everybody in the brig. Yeah. We'll sort it out in a minute. Um, and then, would you like... Captain, would you like me to uh, make a U-turn and head back to the starbase? Uh, once we've got everybody on board, uh, yeah, if we can verify that this vessel is not about to explode, it's evidence. Let's take it with us. All right. Uh, sure. Uh, and uh, I'll like message down to engineering to ask them to finish topping us back off with power because this is going to take us a minute to get back while towing another ship. Mm -hmm. All right. So right everybody right. with a heartbeat goes into the brig and we'll, we'll sort it out who goes where later on all of them. In a... We'll probably have to turn cargo bays into makeshift brigs because oh, they're not a single-class big. ship is pretty big. Nah, they're oh, scale probably, no. They're scale three. They're not that big. There, there's probably forty or fifty at most. Mm -hmm. So, uh, to sort of wrap up the narrative here, you do capture all the Klingons. You do manage to get them back to Starbase Twenty Three, and what comes out is that either through interrogation of the Ambassador himself or interrogation of Captain Oroshi, what this whole shenanigan was was it was meant to be a smear of the federation in light of the newest treaty showed sort of showing the rest of the empire hey these aren't reliable people we should be doing business with kind of a thing um so it was basically a false flag or a, a what do they call it a black flag a black something um where they you know they false flag something and sort of try to shift the blame. Uh, so that's what was going on with the ambassador. Um, now, what that means for a certain JAG officer, I leave to your imaginations. But what it means for you guys is that you have been able to uncover this plot to more or less to stabilize relations with the Klingons. And what really matters is, um, when it comes right down to it, you have... 50, 40, 50 Klingons, including the Ambassador, who are responsible for the deaths of about 10 Denobulan uh, freighter individuals. Now, what you're able to figure out about the Denobulans is that apparently that they're, they were a loose end, like they were sort of a middleman to, um, you know, get the Ambassador on and off the station safely. Uh, and had you actually been able to board the Majestic Sea Cow, you would have found a bunch of slaughtered Denobulans just laying in the corridors. Like, they were already dead by the time you guys got there. Um, so, really, they were just a loose end, but it does give you more to charge the Klingons with in the long run. Um, so, sort of as we wrap up this little story arc, um, obviously a certain station commander has a lot to deal with in terms of new personnel that has to replace a lot of people who are losing their careers for very good reasons. Uh, but what matters for you guys is you're able to finally get a taste of Starbase 23's amazing margaritas. And that's where we'll end the session. So yeah, uh, how did you guys like it? Uh, hopefully that was an entertaining mini arc. Um, you know, I, I'd like to solicit feedback here. You know, what did you guys like about it? What did you not like? Uh, obviously, I, you know, had I it been up to me, we would have played it a little bit closer together. But scheduling such as it is, I'm just happy we were able to play again. 
It was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> I I enjoyed I wish it thoroughly. I wish I wasn't so rusty on Starship Combat. Yeah, and again, the the reason I wanted to at least play it a little bit is because I have to know it almost perfectly by the time I get to Gen Con, because at least one of the... In fact, I think it's the one you're in, Josh, um, because you're in Stormwall, right? I was. I didn't buy my ticket in time. Uh, We can talk about it. I'm still going to show up and try to pressure somebody to leave their seat or just... (laughs) So I'll be there in person. I don't know if I'll be playing. Okay. Yeah, because for Stormwall, it's going to be uh, a Defiant class versus a, Th- a Tholian fleet. So that's that's going to be interesting. But yeah. All right. Well, uh, I'm not going to say when our next session of Akagi is, because as I said at the top of the session, uh, scheduling plus Gen Con, we're probably not going to be reliable again until August. Um, so just sort of watch Twitter, watch my Twitch. Obviously, if you follow me, subscribe me on Twitch again, thank you for those of you that did sub during, uh, during the, uh, the session to appreciate it. Um, just basically watch my social media, watch Twitch. If we play Akagi, you'll notice, but yeah, this is where i the stream. So thank you so much for watching on Twitch, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll see these guys again eventually by stream.